hand over to Matt, who is going to talk to us about how you can protect yourself with insurance to ensure that your company can still continue after some of the if any of these things affect you. Thank you, Simon, and thank you very much to Paul. Uh, it's nothing like a very good IT contractor to put the fear of God into people before we can talk about cyber insurance. So, um, it, as we always say, the prevention is better than the cure. Um, so anything you can follow from Paul's advice is is better than obviously having the the breach that you can have at the other end. What I'm going to do in the presentation is, is just briefly go through the solutions that we have available to clients and just detail what cyber insurance, cyber liability insurance is. So yep, what is cyber? Well, it's probably the worst named insurance product you'll you'll find. Um, because yeah, what what is cyber? So the way I like to describe it to clients is that it covers you against cyber attacks, the effects of that, and data breaches. So it's not just the online data breaches, any type of data breach. So that could be a laptop left on a train, files left on a train. It will cover um, a company against the liability from that. So we, we to simplify, we like to put it into three different pillars of cover. So the first would be a breach response, which is how you would respond to a data breach. The next is a third party liability, which is protecting you against getting sued by by third parties. And the final part is the cybercrime element of it. So that is pretty much what it, it sounds like. It's the criminals coming, taking stuff from you, defrauding you from stuff. So I'll, I'll go into each one of those individually just to explain how a cyber policy will protect you and your, and your business. So the, the breach response, which is the, the core part of the cover. Uh, so this is this is including pretty much every cyber policy. It, so it's a, for an SME, it is the most important part as well. Because when we talk to SME businesses and we say, would you know if you had a data breach, would you know how to respond? In all my years of doing it, I've only had one person say that yes, he did, and he was an expert in the field. So yeah, he knew how to do it. But most SME businesses don't have the facility, the capability, know how to deal with it with a data breach. Uh, so the, the different parts of the cover, the first is the most important, which is the first response expenses. So that typically operates within two days of a data breach. So you discover either ransomware or someone has stole data. Um, you then report it to the insurer and then, it, and then the response kicks in. So that's forensics to find out what's happened. Go and talk to your IT contractor, try and fix it, mitigate the, the effect of it. So stop it happening, make sure it's not happening anymore and doing the initial thing to see what's happened, track it and, and remove any, any problems. After that, then you've got the notification expenses. So you need to tell the ICO within 72 hours. If you don't, then you could face penalties. So the insurers have specialists which can do that for you. They'll also notify any data subjects that their data has been taken. So this would depend on the, well, the complexity that will depend on the size of the organisation but an amount of data that's got taken. So they will tell everyone that their data has gone and, and put a plan together for the ICO to say how they're dealing with it and what's happened. Then you've got the further legal expenses, which is going to cover some specialist solicitors, which are going to stand to charge it to about a thousand pounds plus VAT an hour. So yeah, fortunately the insurance company covers that bill. So the PR costs, which off the back of it to um, put some news out in the media to control it or control your public relations. And um, the data recovery expenses, which they can work in conjunction with your IT contractor. So that's reinstating the data, which is quite important because now you find that actually the data in the business is as important as the hardware. And it actually is because you can't typically run a business now without your data. So they'll get specialists in there to get your data back to where it needs to be. They're putting credit monitoring expenses, which is for the, the, the data subjects that have had their information stolen which will then help them monitor if anyone is using their personal information for, for ill-gotten gains. Um, ransom costs, which as Paul alluded to, they don't like paying because uh, that then puts you on, on a list that gets you targeted. But in some cases they do pay it, um, but they try and avoid that at all costs if they can. And quite often they do have uh, specialists in the field that can work with your IT contractor and know most of the codes to unlock the ransomware. So they've seen most of these before um, and are able to unlock it without actually paying the ransom. 
And finally, it's quite important as well as a business interruption. So if you have a, a data breach and you can't operate, it will cover your loss of profits in that time. And one case that we have saw was a online retailer of fancy dress goods. Um, quite conveniently, they got a, a cyber attack just before Halloween in the lead up to it, which is their busiest time of year. Um, it suspected one of their main competitors had, had gone onto the dark web and purchased it, was never proved. But during their main peak peak time, they were taken off offline, so they couldn't sell any goods. So the policy responded to cover the the loss of revenue in that period as well that were down. So if you're an online retailer, um, that is imperative you have that cover because you you could lose your income and lose your business. The next part is the third party liability. So this is what a traditional cyber liability policy is. So the liability bit is covering your legal liability against getting sued. So the different elements of that where it comes in is a privacy liability. So we're seeing a few of these cases coming now against like British Airways, etc. The big corporate companies where there's class actions going against them. So people are grouping together saying my data got stolen. It's your fault. We're coming to, to sue you. So we'll cover the defence costs of preparing that and the awards as well. Uh, multimedia liability, which is uh, liability through your your social media, your website, etc. So if someone hacks your Twitter and puts a defamatory status about Donald Trump, etc. Um, and then someone comes after you, that will cover the, the liability element of that. And as virus transmission, so if you're found guilty of passing a virus onto a third party, you then get hacked and then they come after you that is covered. Uh, PCI fines are covered, so if you're registered with the PCI and you've got you take credit card details, etc, they can issue fines and some policies will cover those fines. And the last bit, I've put a nice question mark by that, is the GDPR fines. And I've put if insurable, because at the minute the policies are paying it, but we do not know if they legally could be insured because that test case has not gone through the court. So most policies will say it's included, but with a a further comment saying if it's legally insurable, which we don't know yet. We have got a way around that though, because we've got a new solution called uh, Parametric, which will then pay a fixed amount if you have to report a case to the ICO. So you set how much that's for, so how much your maximum fine would be, which would be 50, 100,000, whatever, then you pay a, a, a premium based upon that. Then if your trigger of the policy is you notifying the ICO and the insurance company pays you a fixed sum of money. They don't pay anything else. There's no support. There's no anything other than a fixed amount of money. But that is a way which if a, a company is worried about those fines, they can protect themselves. Last part of the cover, which isn't included on all, is the cyber crime element. As I Paul went through in detail the different elements uh, of the what the, the forces are up to. But in, in the basics of it, what it covers is a theft of funds from your bank account. So your bank account gets hacked, money goes. Uh, the most common part is for money being taken or people losing money is a social engineering fraud. They're getting very elaborate with the ways they're doing that. Um, not all policies do include it, but it's worthwhile if you do have crime insurance to make sure that the social engineering part is covered because that's that's where we're seeing the most claims at, at present. So um, we've got a few SMEs that have been taken about £70,000. So that, that has potential to put them out of business. As Paul said, the cyber extortion uh, he went into. So that's that's a ransomware, etc. And then finally, which we we used to see a lot more of than we do now, in particular the VoIP systems. So the Hackety VoIP system run up 20, 30, 40,000 pounds worth of phone calls to the, the Indian subcontinent or Africa or wherever, and it will cover the cost of those those phone calls if you are proved to be hacked by a third party. So that, that's gone through the three um, separate parts of it. Uh, I've got a nice slide for you just illustrating the rise of crime. So th these are official um, statistics from the government just showing um, the dark blue is the traditional crime. So the cost of that, which you could see there is a, a trend of that going down. And then they started reporting the 14, 15 year to include cybercrime, which then showed actual crime is is on the on the up. And it's predicted that the cybercrime will actually exceed the cost of the traditional crime to, to the UK soon. 
Um, also, there's a nice slide from the insurers, which is showing the difference between the first party and the third party claims. So the third party was the cyber liability side, so someone suing you, and the first party is the cost of the crime and then the data breach response. The traditional cyber liability policy will only cover the third party liability. So if you do have cover and you think you've got cyber liability, make sure you have the correct cover because some of them will only cover 4% of eventualities or 4% of claims, not the 96% that you'd want to be covered. So that, that's a good illustration to show where the insurers are seeing claims. So there's still very few people getting sued for data breaches and the cost is actually the cost of the crime and then also the notification costs and actually dealing with any data breaches internally. Uh, another really slight chart was um, this, this sort of, it is a bit slightly out of date, but the, this data does tend to be from the insurers, but it shows that the claims were notified in 2018. So this is um, the, the sort of volume of them rather than the, the cost of them. But you can see nearly 50% of the claims were either theft of funds or malicious data breach. So those are the ones that the insurers were seeing and, and dealing with claims on and the, the malware, etc., was was quite low um, at that point in 2018. That could have changed slightly, but it does just, just show what, what risks and what, what parts of the business that you need to, to get the insurance for. And I mean, I, I'm guilty, I have robbed this from his cox, as you can see from there. Um, it's not a breach of copyright, don't worry, because I they have given us permission to use it. But it's a very good infographic to show how a policy would respond. So as you can see, it is loaded very much towards the start, the work. So the first part is critical. And you see, so the first part is that an insur insured will notify the insurer of, of the incident. They then get their forensics in to make sure everything's working, get the legal experts in, um, do some further investigation and forensics, and then when that's all done, that's corrected, that's when you go into the, the sort of downward spiral where it's less, there's less activity over time. Um, and that would then be involved in the notification of the regulators, the PR costs to, to sort of mitigate the damage to the business, and then any call centres established to handle the data breaches, and eventually any business interruption claims. So that's the loss of revenue you've sorted. So when it's all all corrected, how, what was the damage financially to the business? But I thought it was a very good graphic which shows how that would, would respond. And uh, any questions you can answer or well, ask in the in the box, I presume uh, Simon will field those at the end. And, and that's it from me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Matt, thanks very much for that. That was really, really informative and helpful and uh, and comforting in parts <laughs> as to how we, can, how we can secure ourselves. Well, well done. And I, I think um, I, I was intrigued actually about the first party versus third party. That was quite a, an interesting differentiation that uh, I, I was unaware of. And I do think certainly malware we've seen in the last couple of years has really grown um, and, and has been very targeted. I don't know why people are targeting it even more now during the COVID thing, but it seems to be that cybercrime generally has, has, has increased um, in these last few months. <laughs>